Okay, we are on top of our roof. It is a 42 foot Grand Design Solitude. And look at all this real estate I have for solar panels. I could probably get six or seven or eight solar panels on here. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do the install. Are you ready for it? Hi, we are Cheryl and John. We sold our home and business in March 2020 and set out to live life differently, traveling the country in an RV with our twin daughters, Brighton and Daisy. We believe the best days are always ahead of us, even in good times. Thank you for joining us as we inspire others to seek the bright days ahead. This is the easiest solar install you'll ever see on YouTube because this is the anti-solar install. First, let's talk solar. What does solar do and what does solar not do? Solar does not power your rig. I think that's a misnomer out there. Just because you can harness solar energy, it doesn't power your rig. What powers your rig is your batteries. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is your batteries. And there are four ways to charge your batteries. And we'll be going over those. One is solar. And you can collect with solar cells on top of your roof power that's harvested and then that power needs to be converted through your converter and charge your batteries. But let's go over a few reasons why you may not want to do solar. One, it's the cost. Sometimes solar can cost $10,000, $12,000, $16,000. Hey, it's kind of like a drug or a really great ice cream. Once when you get going, you can't stop. How much solar do you need? How much money do you have? And this is where it really gets into it. How much are you gonna use it? A lot of people like to boondock and that's why they wanna do solar. And there are some drawbacks to solar, to boondocking or using solar energy and we'll discuss those. But really, after you spend all that money, $16,000 on solar, how many nights could you have stayed in an RV park? Hey. Maybe I'm not talking to you. Maybe you love boondocking and I'm not gonna change your mind. But for those of you that still want to occasionally boondock and learn more about their battery power, watch the rest of our video and we're gonna take you through a few couple steps. Okay, so when people talk about solar, they're really looking for ways to power their rig when they're off grid. And all that really is, is your batteries. So how do you keep your batteries charged? Well, these are our two lithium battle-borne batteries. Now, we found having a residential fridge that our batteries, which were lead acid, would drop below 50%. And even once or twice of dropping below 50% charge on your lead acid batteries will start to kill or they won't take the life of it. So we went ahead and installed two lithium battleborne batteries and we have a YouTube that we'll show you below. But with these two batteries, we get about 200 amp hours out of these batteries or it will run our fridge 24 to 30 hours. And so that's about two nights of boondocking for us. Now there are four ways to recharge your batteries. And let's go over that. Solar is one of them. And this is already the anti-solar video, so we won't be spending much time on that. But let me show you the other ways that you can charge your batteries. One is a generator. So we have a Cummins Onan uh, 5500 LP, so that means it runs on propane generator. So we can simply start this generator and it charges our batteries. And we found even just 30, 40 minutes, depends on how much time we've run down our batteries, we can charge up our batteries. The great thing about lithium batteries is, is that you can, you can take your batteries down all the way to zero charge. And it's not a kill the life of your batteries. And they're warranted for over 10 years. And really at the end of 10 years, they just redo the life cycle for about 70 years. So those lithium batteries will outlive you. So when we added up the cost of the lithium batteries, it was basically a lifetime battery for us. And it really made more sense to us to start powering our rig with lithium batteries. And if we ever run a little low on it while we're out in boondocking, we simply charge it up with our Onan generator. Okay, if your batteries are running low, what's another way you could charge the batteries? Well, our favorite way is simply plugging in shore power. 
So that's something that you need to think about. How often will you be boondocking and how long? If you're not and you're really looking at just boondocking two or three nights at a time, you may not need solar. You could just get it with a generator and then when you come back to a nice park like this, you can plug into your 30 or your 50 amp shore power and that will charge and power your batteries as well to full charge. Here's another way to charge your batteries, and it's one that I don't think a lot about it, people think of, and that's your alternator on your truck. This little alternator right down here can also charge the batteries. Now it does more of a trickle charge as you're driving down the road, and so it charges the batteries while your seven pin connector is connected. So even though my residential fridge is drawing down my battery power, my alternator is adding back in power as we're driving. In a pinch, if for some reason your generator wasn't working or you weren't next to shore power, you could charge your batteries with an alternator. Now, I kind of said it was a trickle charge. It could take you six, seven, eight hours to charge your batteries depending on what you had. But in a pinch, you could use the alternator on your truck to charge your batteries. All right, so I know there's some naysayers out there that are still really into solar. Again, you can spend all the money on solar, but here's the problem with solar. You can have all the solar in the world, but you don't have all the black tank or gray tank in the world. So to wrap up the easiest solar install you've ever seen on YouTube, let's review. Solar doesn't really power your rig, it's your batteries that do. And so our recommendation is, instead of going out and investing in a big solar system, look at your batteries first. Do you still have that lead acid battery? Maybe you should look at getting a lithium battery. And maybe just get one to start out with and then another. There's lots of alternatives out there on lithium batteries and they've come a long ways right now. But use your investment that way. For those that are putting in big solar installs, sometimes they run between ten, sixteen, and twenty thousand dollars. And we've decided as our family, you know, I could stay at a lot of nice parks, 365 nights of glamping at a really nice park for the cost of solar. So just think about those things. I think a lot of times you get in an RV and you get into this life and everybody's one-upping each other and saying, solar, solar this and solar that. And remember, there's lots of ways to power your batteries and you're really concerned about how to power your rig and where your energy draws are. Our big energy draw is our residential fridge. So we needed to take care of that so we could camp one or two nights boondocking at Boondockers Welcome or Harvest Hosts or even a Walmart. And to do that, we needed a lithium battery. So we hope this video helped you out and you found it helpful. If you do, please subscribe to our channel and we hope to see you on the road with bright days ahead.